It's 7.30 a.m. and the kids are off to school in Kalimpong in the Himalayan foothills. Like elsewhere in India, schools are mostly for the middle and upper classes. Many were started by Christian missionaries back in British times when this area became a refuge from sweltering cities like Calcutta. A couple miles downhill is the newest missionary school, named not after a patron saint, but the father of modern India. At Gandhi Ashram, it is the first day of a new school year. Father Thomas Edward Maguire, a Jesuit priest, is choosing his newest kindergarten. So, school Gathered around him are dozens of anxious parents whose kids could never get into another school. A lucky 25 or so will get in. Sunita, okay. All good. McGuire's looking in particular for the name Bishwakarma, a name shared by people on the lowest rung of India's caste system. We're trying to pick the poorest we can find. If someone comes and tells me uh, uh, my name is uh, something, Bishwakarma, then uh, they've made 80% on our entrance tests that we have here, you see. Admission is, most immediately, a meal ticket. Between the Nutrella and the vegetables they get in the curry here, it's a rather well-balanced meal. Plain, but very nutritious. And this is something that they would not get in their own homes uh, that is normally. Certainly, yes. You'll see, after they finish the meal here, how they'll start running around, sort of giving other witnesses to the presence of uh, a nutritious meal. There's not much equipment or playground to run around on, but instead of cricket bats, every child here, almost from day one, is provided a violin. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Most have never heard the instrument, certainly not playing Western music. But listen to the next class. They are three to five years along, but seem light years ahead. What made you think of think up this whole idea of teaching these kids violin and Western music? Well, uh, I suppose, first of all, because I like it myself very much. I don't play. Father McGuire came here 50 years ago from Canada to teach in the prestigious Jesuit schools. But McGuire also worked the streets, trying to bring into the schools children of people he calls coolies or laborers. Because their children were more likely to be academically behind, McGuire began looking for activities at which they could excel. One day, he asked a visiting violinist from the Calcutta Symphony to play for his street kids. And I told him before uh, he came, they might giggle or laugh or that sort of thing. And he said, fine, I'll, I'll be ready for that. He played for well over an hour, and there was just rapt attention. So then I thought maybe they might take an interest in this kind of music. When he started his own school in the early 90s, with money from Indian, German, and Canadian donors, McGuire hired some of the Cooley children he'd adopted years before to be teachers, including music director oh. Rudramani Bishwakarma. Mm. Mm. Rudramani was a boy who had, as we proved later, extraordinary ability in music, native ability. Now, uh, I first met Rudramani in Darj the streets of Darjeeling when he was seven or eight years old. And he was, he was just with a, a coolie. He was earning his own livelihood. Under McGuire's tutelage, he went on to get a college degree and remarkably, just in the past two years, hearing aids to correct a severe impairment he'd endured since childhood. Rudramani says few words. His passion and eloquence are more evident in the music he plays, teaches, and arranges. Everything from Mozart to movie scores to Nepali folk songs. I would bet you that 95% of the children I have here have never owned a toy. All these children can do is sit around and play Mozart, lucky kids. They can't go and listen to boom, 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 or oh, on the TV. Meet Kushmita Bishwakarma. Her parents labor on farmland in exchange for food and space for their tin-roofed home. 
We're happy, very happy. We're happy to see them go to study because we, of course, do not have a chance to study. Now they are able to get an education. They can have a better life than we did. For Kushmita and about 30 older students, McGuire has gotten scholarships to attend the so-called mainstream schools. So we, we like to go and get measured for the uh, school uniform. It's a big break, but it's also a social challenge to fit in. That's where their violins fit in, providing a boost in self-confidence. I used to play violin. I used to play solo songs and all like Hindi, Nepali songs, no? And they all used to love me playing violin. And I, I had friends, many friends I had in the convent. So you had many friends in the convent school yeah. because you were able to yeah. play violin. Uh, and I was good also. And you were good also? Yeah. <laughs> She's good at the violin. So good she was pulled out of school to be tutored by a visiting German music teacher in hopes of attending one of Germany's most prestigious conservatories. Before I didn't know the like rules and the way how we should play violin. She taught me how I should hold my bows and how should I catch the violin. I want to come back to Kalimpong because Mm, my parents are here. I was born here. I studied in Gandhashram school in Kalimpong. Would you like to be a teacher in Kalimpong someday? Teach music yeah. at Gandhi Ashram? Yeah. You belong to the Society of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Where is Jesus in this Hindu majority school? Well, my Christianity has lived here is trying to get breakfast for those kids in the, in the morning. Huh? Go out and develop your talents. Huh? God created you for a purpose. God has a purpose in mind for you in this world today. What is it? You find out. He says few of these kids would likely want to make a career as musicians, but music has been their ticket to an education and a ticket out of generational poverty. <laughs> 